but obviously the big breakup with oh, Emily. I'm gonna crack the beer. Yeah, open get the beer point. open. So I'm I'm baby. <laughs> she wanted marriage. She wanted kids. She wanted it a lot sooner than I did. It wasn't the path I was on. I was sort of business focused, head down. She did the business before reality TV. Is that right? Yeah, we were going to use the show to to promote what we're trying to do. Oh, really? But you can't wear anything branded on TV. I mean, I've got it tattooed here. And then the next day I came in with a tattoo and I speak like this. I just sit there and be like, how about that? We got basically scammed. A uh, bank account got hacked into and lost 70 grand. That was tough. Would you do it again to help grow your business? Yeah, 100%. Harvey Armstrong, welcome to the Inspired By Show. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's good to be able to catch up with you. Now, we were talking a bit off camera about um, the world you live in and the sort of reality TV versus entrepreneurship and so on. But one of the things that not a lot of people know about you is being an, an accountant from PwC. Now, yeah. one of the things that I find fascinating, I'm actually an accountant from PwC. I saw that actually on your bio, yeah. So yeah. when people often say to me, oh, but Chloe, how did you go from being an accountant to a book publisher? And I always feel like I'm a bit of an idiot trying to explain the journey. And I love the fact that I'm speaking to another person that has done that, the hard graft of the accounting world and then jump ship. So how does how does an accountant in PwC go to reality TV and now to multiple business owner? Mm, leap of faith. Um, I guess what fueled me getting into accounting first and foremost was sort of a, an intrigue for business, a passion for business and wanting to understand kind of the metrics and I guess the functionality behind what creates a, a good business. Um, I, I I saw actually on your, on your bio that you, you qualified at a really young age as well. Mm. I similarly went on a sort of, I guess it's called the Fly and Start course. Through, yeah. was, that, was that what you were on? Yeah. No yeah, way? Yeah. Really? At Newcastle? No, I did it in Jersey in the Channel Islands. Ah, yeah. yeah, so that's what I did. So I did the Fly and Start course at Newcastle. So it's basically an accelerated course to get your ACA um, and qualify as an accountant. So it was basically two terms at Newcastle, one term down in London, working through busy season, which is obviously the kind of peak of, of the auditing world where everyone's financial year end is end of December normally. So January to April is this... this you know, mad period where they get us little minions to come down and help. And um, so it was an amazing course. And I was 18, obviously, when I signed up, the same way you sign up for any UCAS. Is it UCAS? Is yeah. It good? yeah. yeah. UCAS uh, course. And I think at, the, at that young age, I was like, I don't really know what I want to do. Like the same way everybody goes into university, or, or most people. Um, and I just knew that I wanted to do something a little bit more than what university is. Like it's an amazing experience, but you know, some some could argue it's three, four years wasted. And it's a great experience, mm -hmm. but, you know, where's the progression in it? Um, and to be honest, on that point, if I was to go back, I probably wouldn't go through university. I'd go straight into business, but we're diverging. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I did this course because it was great. It meant that I could accelerate myself into you know, qualifying um, with the ACA and I could earn a bit of money through, through university. Um, so I did that. Uh, and that was kind of, I guess the decision there was, yeah, to do something a bit more than what university had to offer at the time. Um, and I liked business, I liked finance, but then I kind of got through the process. I was like, God, all this thing is dull. Like it really is. And like, it, you know, it doesn't have much commercial value in the sense of, you know, it's a regulatory thing. You're going into people's offices, the auditors are here, they didn't really want you there. It didn't, it wasn't fulfilling. It didn't get me out of bed in the morning. Um, and I wanted something bigger. I wanted something sort of more high risk, more high reward. Uh, so I started, you know, I qualified and that was what I was always set out to achieve and I was going to do it. And I guess the moment I qualified, I was like, right now, what? No, no, just the next thing. And so I kind of looked into the more commercial facing side of finance world. I wanted to look, you know, investment banking, private equity, um, corporate finance. I went for a few interviews and I was just like, and the, and the common feedback was, why do you want to do this job? And I was like, I don't actually know. Like, I don't have a passion for like working for someone else or like, you know, matrix numbers. Like, I love business, but you know, why do you have a passion for, you know, raising finance for another company? I don't really have a passion for it. I just like, so I was like, actually, I, I want to do my own thing. Like, that was always kind of what was bubbling. Mm -hmm. um, up inside me and I wanted I'm a very I'm a risk taker like I, I love living on the edge and like thrill seeker and it's kind of I live under pressure like if I'm, if I'm not pressured I'm kind of not moving forward so I'm always mm. kind of almost artificially putting pressure on myself and like putting deadlines like sort of closer than they need to be or just so I'm like okay like it's always on this kind of fine edge of like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> um and I like that. That's the way I live. I've always, I don't know. I've grown up that way. So um, that for me was, yeah, what kind of was going to excite me for, for, mm. for my life, for my for my time on this planet. I was like, I want to do something that that 
gets me out of bed and yeah that every day i'm like i don't know there's this kind of shadow like following mm. me like oh shit like keep moving forward keep moving forward otherwise like yeah i don't know yeah yeah and a lot so of people kind of took that leap of faith a lot of people can't handle that shadow following you know they're like they want the stability they want the security mm. and actually being in the auditing world even though it is employment and there is like stable income when you're employed there it's not that stable an environment to be in, you know, like you do have those long hours, those crazy, you know, oh, are we going to hit that deadline? And there is that rush of that, um, but it's not quite the same, same thrill. And I think that's the challenge. I went through slightly different, actually. So I was 18, same as you, but where I'm from in Jersey and Channel Islands, they didn't have universities. Mm. So you had to just work the whole year and study the whole year. And I qualified and I just remember being like, I'm never putting myself through that ever again. Like I just got to the end. Um, didn't quite take the leap of entrepreneurship as early as I wish I could mm. and I did but what were you thinking then so you've decided you're like 21 okay I'm not going to go to investment banking or private equity I'm going to do a business what where did that come from and what was the business you thought of um so just just for context so did you qualify and then just just leave? Yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. I qualified and straight in the end straight, pretty much straight yeah. away <laughs> I, I went traveling first and That's thought a big like drop out, right? I remember going I remember qualifying and being like I just need to leave. And so I ended up going for like a long like three or four months traveling because mm. I didn't go to the university, didn't have gap year, didn't have any of that like fun. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it now. Did like three, four months traveling, like the typical Asia, all of the, you know, usual kind of student. Finding that, yourself. Yeah, so. up, that, <laughs> didn't find anything actually <laughs> no. other than hangovers, but oh, no. you know, it was what it was. Um, but then I came back and I ended up getting headhunted by a client and I ended up, I stayed in the corporate world probably till I was like 24, 25. And that's when I started my business because I was like, if I don't leave now, I'm never going to. So you basically to. went into industry as an accountant, helped yeah. internally and then yeah, went, yeah. no. Went what was the... it for you? What fueled you to get in out? This isn't for me. Um, I actually just realized that it was just not achieving anything. Like finance is great. You're helping rich people get richer and it was just like saving money. And I ended up becoming a director, but I was more in like the project and compliance world by that point, like risk rather than accounting. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking to myself like, if I don't come in today, what's going to be different? You know, there was like nothing really deep going on with it. Mm. And then I had to sort of like a mini breakdown, like when went through this point where I was like, God, I just can't handle the stress. And people were saying I'm too young. And I just completely just melted down. And I was like, right, I need to start from the ground up. And that's how I got into this. And now that's why I love hearing inspiring stories and talking to other people that are a little bit not traditional as well and actually mm. want to do something different rather than the nine till five that a lot of people get stuck in. Great. No, I love that. I love yeah. that we share sort of similar um sort of career starting path yeah. yeah um sorry but yeah back to back to your question yeah so yeah how it's like reverse podcasting i love <laughs> yeah, it I'm, so I'm you need to start a podcast <laughs> <laughs> so, I, just find it, I just find it so intriguing but so when it comes to your first business so you were 21 decided you wanted to start a business roughly yeah i think i was, I was 22 when i qualified okay um and i as i was saying you know it wasn't what got me out of bed in the morning and it, it was it was a classic case of that you know that Venn diagram as passion meets interest meets you know opportunity and experience mm -hmm. and I you know I, I sort of looked at to into you know what I loved which was beer <laughs> <laughs> um, and sort of socialising and being out and about and I, you know I've got a very active social life I love people I love being around people I love I love hosting I love the hospitality side of things mm -hmm. um, and. Obviously, I had a background in business and accounting, so I understood business and what it would take to kind of structure something, you know, for like financial model to to raise. So I, I knew that I could kind of hold my own um, when it came to you know, actually seeking funding and actually creating a business and, and not being, you know, stabbed in the dark. You know, it's always going to be mm -hmm. stabbed in the dark with entrepreneurism, but not, you know, not not too much so. Um, and opportunity and, you know, opportunity of that. You know, the beer market is very stagnated. Um, you know, it's it's it, it, traditionally it's it's high calorie, it's high carb, it's you know it puts it's bloating, it puts a lot of people off. Um, you know, it alienates females because of that bloat, and mm -hmm. the consumers are becoming you know increasingly health conscious. Um, you know, accelerated probably through lockdown. You know, the new pandemic really is running and fitness and eating cleaner, mm -hmm. and then you sort of get to the you get to your weekend and you kind of ruin it all in in the pub. Um, and you sort of pack on all this unnecessary calories and carbs, um, and there's kind of nobody out there, you know, refining the the beer space and and providing a lower calorie, lower carb alternative, a more mindful approach to drinking, but still having a good time. Yeah. Um, so I saw that opportunity, and yeah, it kind of all aligned. I was like, well, there's there's something here, and I'm going to back it. Wow. Yeah. That's serious commitment because a lot of yeah. a lot of businesses I've worked with. I mean, my businesses are all service based businesses, so thankfully depending on how you look at it, 
there's not a huge cash influx needed. Like I've never had to seek investment. Luckily, I funded myself through various family members and myself and then gone on to make money. So I've been able to grow it that way. Whereas I can't even imagine backing yourself to needing a product based business where there's a lot of cost up front. Oh, yeah, it is. It's um, it's crazy. It's a complete, you know, it's, it's a high volume, low margin business. So until you reach kind of serious economies of scale, it's a very much cash burning business. So it, it, you got to raise, you got to raise, raise, raise. It's all about revenue growth. It's all about sort of gaining traction in the market, demand for your product. Um, and that kind of, you know, that proves that, you know, you, you're creating something. You're, it's a very competitive landscape. Yeah. Um, and, and it is really about sort of trying to cut through um and gain sort of market share. And mm-hmm. if you can do that, it, it's incredibly lucrative um, multiples on exit. So mm. that's what's exciting. But yeah, it's very much a cash burning business, which means you got to raise, which means you got to, you know, you got to pitch, you got to go through investment rounds 24 mm. seven, like, which it which takes a lot of resource out of the business. And that's what's quite tough in that, you know, we, re- so we, we self-funded it initially, personally, um, with our co-founders and brought sort of product to market, product in hand, you know, proved, proved concept, got a bit of traction in the market so that we had a bit more leverage on our, you know, on our value and, and retaining equity. So then we raised, um, you know, quite soon after, after launching to market. Um, and we're now going into our third round, uh, wow. currently. So it's, you know, and, and that, that takes a lot of time and resource out of the business and, and pushing it forward, which, mm. but it's the way that, that all alcohol businesses go. Yeah. Um, I think there's a there's a start where it's you need about five million to go from you know out the red into the green and wow. start being profitable to get an alcohol company off the ground. So anyone out there? Now, I just wanted to quickly interrupt this episode to share a quick message with you. Now, I've been hosting these interviews with Inspired by Show for a while now, and I've been loving all of the great feedback from our listeners. And it really means a lot when you all share from listening to these episodes, watching these episodes, share your incredible feedback. And I love that you love it as much as we do. Now, my mission for the Inspired by Show is to inspire others to challenge the norm, share their story, knowing that it's okay to be vulnerable and shock horror, take the mask off and be raw and real. So So I have a favor to ask. Can you help me on this mission by sharing this episode with someone who you think needs to hear this message? Maybe there's a friend, a loved one, a colleague, or someone that you know that would really benefit from hearing this inspiring story. If you could do that to help us help even more people to challenge the norm and push themselves out of their own comfort zone, then I'd really appreciate it. So if you haven't already, share this episode with a friend, a loved one, a colleague, or someone that you know would benefit. Now, back to the episode. (laughs) (laughs) but that's why i find really interesting because if you look at like there are a lot of celebrity owned alcohol businesses Mm -hmm. it seems to be the thing of the last like 10 years i would say and a lot of them self-fund and they have the money to burn to get to that point and a lot of people probably saw you on reality tv made in chelsea and thought like what a lot of reality tv stars do they start on reality tv possibly from speaking to people I've had on the show so far, not make as much money as they maybe thought they would from TV and then have gone into starting a business afterwards. But what a lot of people don't know about you is you did the business before reality TV. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's an interesting point you make there as well with the lack of earnings within kind of the TV world now. I think, you know, there's a point to be made that it's very much a saturated market now. Like mm-hmm. What you could earn in my world and sort of Made in Chelsea um, you know, and other sort of reality shows now is is sort of 10p on on the on the pound compared to what you could make 10 years ago because it's just saturated so like the following doesn't go up as much you're not you know pas aren't a thing you can't you know you don't get paid as much like for sort of brand campaigns etc etc so it's interesting that you know people do now need to look for other opportunities Mm -hmm. um that can actually i guess create a a, a sort of bigger value Mm -hmm. uh pool than they used to be but um, yeah, I, I very much um, started Primetime conceptually with my co-founder, Sam. Um, we didn't have a name. We didn't have a product. We had an idea. Uh, and the show had been asked me to go on for, for a few years pre this. While I was doing my accounting, I was in the back end of that, finish off my last three exams. The big ones, what they called the advanced. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> I remember them. <laughs> the trauma's coming back. <laughs> yeah, actually, yes, yeah, so I, I, was, I was three weeks out from those exams biggest exams obviously of my life at that point and i look back at whatever but at the time i was like oh my god and then i broke up with my ex-girlfriend who was sophie at the time well she, she broke up with me uh basically I, I got asked to go on it after university as i was leaving and i was like no no i've got another year to finish off my a- aca my qualification mm. 
it's not really the right time. But as a business kind of man and and someone with intrigue, I was like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to for these interviews. I want to understand what you know what you get paid a day. Can I f- like can I fit it into my current mm. job at PwC? Can I you know can I find another revenue stream? Um, and I went for the interviews. I assessed it, and I was like, it's not it's not that great. <laughs> and also like I don't think PwC were that keen on me doing it at the time. So I was like, <laughs> and it, it didn't align you know what I was trying to do. Um, but I, I got I got a sort of a, a gauge on, on what it was about and what it could offer me. And in that process, I introduced them to my girlfriend at the time. She was like, and long story short, she broke up with me and went on the show because um, I wasn't going to go on it. So I was like, oh, fuck that hurt. Um, and two years on, they were obviously, I was then the ex and she did very well on the show. And now she's obviously mm-hmm. engaged, married to Jamie. Um, but she did very well on the show, and then also they were like, "Harvey, come on, we need we need to get this guy on because we there was still a bit of back and forth for a while after the breakup." And then uh, I started prime time conceptually with Sam, and you know, still asking me. And then it was at that point it was like, "You know what? This could actually synergize with what I'm trying to do and add value." So we went on it um, with a concept and idea, um, which was the caffeine infused lager. We were sort of in the process of developing it and starting to talk to breweries and you know, just figuring out how we're going to get this this thing to become a reality um and we st- yeah we went out to buenos aires where we started on, on an away trip and our whole our first scene and we'll look back on this one day um was we were, we were like basically the storyline was what are you guys doing out here and we we're like oh yeah we're out here like talking to breweries and trying to find a brewing partner <laughs> like easy for glass. it's like <laughs> we were like but we will and we're gonna we, we're gonna use the show to to promote what we're trying to do um and yeah, and we and I've done that ever since. I mean, I've got I've got it tattooed here, so uh, because, <laughs> because like you can't wear anything branded advert. on. Yeah, oh, really? but you can't wear anything branded on TV. So I used to try and come in with a t-shirt or a cap, like prime time, prime, prime time, and then they were like, "Harvey, oh, take the cap off, take the t-shirt off." I was like, "Fine," and then the next day I came in with a tattoo, I was like, oh, and I speak like this. I just sit there and be like, "How about that?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that is serious out. commitment. Yeah. Serious <laughs> commitment. I love that. So I was trying to get it in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of wow. why I, yeah, I used the show. Um, well, I didn't use the show, you know, it's, and, and I've really enjoyed it. Like it's mm. not, I wouldn't do it if I, you know, if I didn't enjoy it, but mm. it's definitely, I think you've got to be clever with it because it isn't as rewarding as it once used to be in terms of like the sort of remuneration package mm. and everything you can gain from it. So you've kind of got to be clever with, with how you leverage it to benefit, you know, your exterior mm. world. Mm. Yeah. I find it really interesting because you're probably the third or fourth reality TV person that I've met, that I've seen on screen and I've met and then I've spoken to on the, on the show. And every one of them, it's not been an intention. Like, it's not like I've woken up and gone, I want to be famous or I want to be a reality TV star. It's always for a purpose, for a structure. But what I think some people will maybe be surprised with you is how much of a business focus you do have. You know, you're very like very, even just being aware, like prime time, prime time. A lot of people probably aren't that switched on, and there isn't a bit of an assumption with reality TV people that they're not as educated as maybe others. But speaking to you, speaking to people I've met, it's been so, like very, very different from what I've heard other mm. people have experienced. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's a sort of taboo or a, a, a sort of pre what's the word pre preconception mm-hmm. of what um you know people from reality TV are like i think there are there, there are two types i've found there are people that are chasing the fame and potentially and it's you know it's no, no judgment but you know lost as to what they want to do and and that's a it's a career path it's a job mm. route it's it is a, you know you can do it it can keep your head above water but some people do it one dimensionally and it's that's their that's their everything and then there are some people that go now. This is a marketing tool. This is a leverage um, you know, tool that I can I can use to enhance the bigger picture. Mm. Um, and and I you know I look back at people who ha- have done it and proven case studies of you know Jamie with Candy Kittens, Spencer's doing very well, Clean Co, um, Serge de Nimes. There's 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 some amazing brands that have come off the guys that have been on that show. Um, and you know it's hard to pinpoint exactly, but. I'm sure they owe a lot of that success to mm. you know the marketing that's that's come through that show. Um, so I saw that and I was like, you know, there's clearly something um, you know value add there. And equally within the alcohol industry, like it's a it's a kind of proven case study that you you pair sort of celebrity face to alcohol company, like mm. everybody's doing it. You, the Rock, you know, mm. um, Kylie Jenner. Um, is it Kylie Jenner? What's it? no? 
Wait, who? Which one? I'm like, which? I which don't alcohol? keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> Me neither. Eight one eight is <laughs> yes. the brand. I actually yeah. don't know the girls, but yeah, um, uh, yeah you know, Conor McGregor. The, the list goes mm. on. Ryan Reynolds, Beckham, everybody. Of course, yeah. So I thought I saw that, and I was like, I, I obviously on a much lesser scale can be both the face and the brains behind mm. whereas normally you know they're the, the face and they've got you know a, a, a joint venture with somebody who probably has got uh, um you know experience in the alcohol industry mm. and, and yeah. does all the operations and the backbone of the business but i was like I, i'm going to start by being both alongside obviously my co-founder who also started the show with me um yeah and i think that's been you know a catalyst to to you know getting us going and, mm. and getting gaining some traction in the market yeah. So mm. you intentionally went into reality TV for, as a marketing strategy. You're like, we will. This will help us leverage our brands and then the business brands. What was maybe your biggest surprise being in reality TV? Um, that I'm monotone and boring. Apparently. <laughs> 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 yeah, that didn't surprise me actually because I know I am that, but I'm not boring. Just monotone. <laughs> uh, what was my biggest surprise? Um, it was a bit more structured than i thought yeah i think i i went into it thinking it'll be very free-flowing and like you know you can just sort of like one two three go and no one's going to come in and kind of stop you or, or mm. try and sort of lead you in any direction but it's a bit yeah it's a bit kind of more structured as a word than than i'd thought but it wasn't a surprise because i guess i read the contract and it kind of does stipulate that but mm. um no, I don't know. I don't have got an answer for it. Mm -hmm. Nothing really. It didn't really surprise me. She just kind of went with the flow. Yeah, because I think I had a bit of an insight to people on the show and, mm -hmm. and what it was about because I'd gone for previous interviews and stuff. So I kind of knew what to expect when doing it. And it was a huge decision. Like, I, I, I'm very much, like, I'm very calculated. Uh, like, mm -hmm. and I assess everything. I, like, no stone unturned. Like, if I make a decision, it, it's, I've, I've looked at the worst case, the best case, the middle case, and four mm -hmm. times around. Like, and I'd, it was it was the hardest decision of my life to go on that show because i I was leaving a financial career behind as i was saying i was 22 i qualified i was earning more money than most of my mates i was um i was earning more money then than i was sort of three four years after making that decision and, and moving on um so i was like this is this is a big decision like if i do this and actually what i've realized since but if i do this potentially i can't step back into the financial world because people have this pre-notion of your mm -hmm. reality tv star now and like you can't then go back to being i don't know in a credible finance role mm -hmm. i don't think now doing it i think i'd probably if i wanted to go back into accounting or finance or some space there obviously mm -hmm. i'd probably walk into an office and people are like sad guy but i think i could still have sort of that credibility to do so but um uh, yeah so i spent about three four weeks like sleepless nights being like should i do it should i not should i do it should i not um because it was it wasn't just a decision of kind of going on reality tv and obviously exposing yourself to the public and and, and the, you know the kind of fear that comes with that but it was also the leap into entrepreneurism and mm. it was that like taking that leap of faith as well as um and it was like if i do this i'm fully backing my journey as an entrepreneur mm. and i'm fully leaving my role as an accountant or my you know the five years or four years i'd put into qualifying as an accountant and you know what is a very kind of respectful qualification and, and can lead you into an amazingly kind of fruitful mm. financial career path um and looking back like i probably would be only more now if i'd stayed in that career than i am but equally i would not be enjoying it as much as I am. Mm, so. Yeah, I can completely relate. Not necessarily to the reality TV side, but the leap. And it is fascinating because you've you did both at the same time. You kind of leapt into I'm going to be super visible, and I'm going to be super visible while doing something brand new that I've never done before. Mm. You know, and so there's two leaps there within there. For me, I actually did it the opposite. So I left the corporate world and ended up moving to Australia because I was like, I'm going to start a business over there. And if it fucks up, I can just come back. No, no one will know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually grew up in Australia. No, so way, I did you? Uh, yeah, yeah. My dad's Australian. I'm half Australian. Oh, no way. Mm, amazing place. Yeah, I absolutely loved I, it. I don't know why and, we would try and go there. Yeah. And do you know what? I also learned so much about entrepreneurship there because mm. they were so much more open-minded to, there were like some really successful people, definitely t totally different to the world I've seen here. And I've actually brought stuff I learned there, here, and done really well in the UK with it. Were you in because Sydney? They were, no, so we were in Perth for a lot oh. of the time and then Sydney for the rest of it yeah. like sort of traveled around in the middle but it was it was so great and 
but it was then I came back and people were like, oh, I thought you went traveling. And I was like, no, no, I was building a business while I was doing it. Yeah. Um, so it was a really interesting thing, but obviously nowhere near to the same level as jumping in and, and being on reality TV. Now, I'm curious for you, when it came to being in reality TV, everyone, and I'm sure you probably talk about it loads, you know, people want to know what it's really like and that sort of stuff. Um, how different was it for you compared to real life? So, you know, in these conversations, like in the relationships, the friendships, like do people make real friendships through TV? Yeah, again, I think there's two types of people. I personally can hand on heart say I've never kind of flexed my morals or um, tried to have an opinion that I don't actually have uh, through the journey. Like I'm trying to stay as real as as I can. Mm. But there's definitely an element of the business side of what it takes to be successful and and, and sort of gain traction on the show and, and stay around as like a long standing cast member. Um, whereby you you do need to buy into the fact that you you need to create good tv like mm -hmm. you are encouraged you are paid to bring the drama and you know to do so sometimes if your life doesn't revolve around drama which clearly mine seems to you <laughs> have to kind of i guess um formulate it yourself and kind of get out of your way to do so and that's when it starts to become a bit like it, you know some people do it and you're like oh, mate it's, it's so fake what are you doing like i can see it from a mile off but people do do that so mm, yeah yeah do you see it more because you've been in reality tv so like for example what i found was when i went through some of my experiences i spotted traits in other people because i've lived and breathed it so you know do you see it more when you're on reality tv now and you see people like playing up and things like that yeah you can fully see it as actually interesting i was watching the i was watching love island the final i, I haven't had the time to sort of watch the whole thing but just because i'm the uh, all stars i know a few people from it so i was in interested i was sitting there with tristan and we were watching it and because obviously we have a background in tv we were like okay we could just pick apart we're like that's set up that is a fixed rig mm -hmm. shot that's uh like loose rig that's mm -hmm. clearly produced that's not like and uh, i was actually having dinner with casey last night who was on the show um for this primetime launch we had mm -hmm. um and just hearing about it from his side and i was like okay yeah like you you, you definitely gain an insight and, of course you and do understand like yeah, yeah you can spot it, it a mile off yeah. <laughs> and I, i'm not in tv but i'm in production with this and with the book publishing business and so even i see it like someone walks over to someone you're like well they weren't going to do that before like nowhere is that ever popped up into the conversation you can kind of just tell when it's been produced but that make that's what people know that what they're going in for right mm. now i'm curious for you obviously you've had you have had lots of friendships and relationships through the show how how challenging it can it be having you know ex-girlfriends in reality TV, like you mentioned, Sophie went into it. Sophie Hibby went into it after or before you, through you, whichever way around you talk about it. Having Emily as an ex on the show as well. How does that, how, I can't even imagine having ex girlfriends <laughs> when there's cameras around, you know, surely that makes it just a hell of a lot more complicated. It's bizarre. It's honestly like we, we, we say, it, like there is no, in what world would you be sort of hanging out with your ex girlfriend? Like, yeah. so, for example, I, we went out to Bali a year and a bit ago for an away series with, with me and Chelsea um and i was out there with emily and this was sort of a year post our breakup and in what world would i be out on a holiday in bali like living i wasn't in the same villa there's two villas but we're down the road from each other with my ex and then her boyfriend at that time came out so i was there with like my ex and her boyfriend and i was there and it was just like in what world you know yeah um but i guess you kind of compartmentalize it by going yeah this is business mm. yeah and it isn't life like it is partly business and it's partly it's reality like that very much do follow the core like emotions and there's a backbone to it which is all genuine mm. um but in a structured way yeah 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 it is it is very interesting and i think when you're like i'm sure in a way series is probably a little bit more pressured because there is like you know only so places you can go do you guys speak off camera like with exes or ex friendships or is it very much like cut right you know shut your hand see you mate yeah, see you colleague bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> no there's like i genuinely have some really good mates um and, and friendships and i've had an amazing relationships off off, mm -hmm. off the show so there's, there's definitely there's a lot of realness as i was saying like yeah you know, emily and i was very much full love we mm -hmm. lived together it was it was very much a real thing mm -hmm. and it very much ended in a real way um same with sort of res tris like very good mates of mine and they will be when the show's done when i'm mm. done with it if they leave it whatever uh, that will that will stick around mm. but then there's probably also an element of uh, yeah of, of i guess it's colleagues it's the same way that you know if you're working in a in a business you will 
go for a beer after work with someone because it's your colleague but you're mm. probably not going to invite them to your wedding do you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah 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 i was the same with like pdpc i don't know where it was with you but it was a very small like it's a bit like 20 of us i think started at the same time and so like hookups were going around and it was kind of like one of those sort of environments where you're all under the same pressure and you have that thing that you can relate to now um you've probably talked about it so much and i do have to mention it just from my own experience as well but obviously the big breakup with oh, emily I'm crack the beer yeah open get the beer point. open so I'm I'll, Sam, baby. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest with you harvey when i saw it on tv it, oh it's hot it's hot, it's hot. You're, you're, you're uh you're catching you're saving time <laughs> bracing yourself um so yeah when i saw the big breakup on tv I was like, Harvey, what the fuck? What were you doing? But obviously didn't know you other than shouting at the TV. So I'm not really bothered about why you did it because you probably talked about it so many times. Mm. But for me, the bit I'm curious about is being on TV, does it make you be more mindful of what you do outside of TV? And and how different was it going through, you know, it it coming out into the public and everybody's got an opinion? Like, how was that? Um, yeah, it's, it's tough, obviously, having to share that sort of, um, emotional situation with the nation is, is horrible and I think on your point um, once it's shared to the nation and, and it put what I guess their take on it their judgment factor then kind of almost cements a decision in the other person's mind mm. because if the if everyone thinks this you kind of got to back it. and I'm not saying Emily should have ever taken me back or forgiven it or whatever but if she wanted to have done that and gone oh, you know slipped up fucked it let's try and move on she wouldn't have been able to because the whole world would have been like well not the whole world mm. all the viewers out there would have been like what are you doing like mm. no and so she'd almost like day one was like and it, mm. it makes it a lot harder you can't really communicate in, in a normal way that you would like it's all like the show's trying to follow it you're trying to like you know try and have a real kind of conversation around it um yeah that was a, that was a tricky one yeah 100 um yeah i guess yeah, I, you know, why it happened, I know you, you didn't want to ask why it happened, mm. but obviously I guess it leads on to why we're here in prime time and it was just, it was very much, you know, I think we're on different paths. She wanted kind of this, um, she wanted marriage, she wanted kids, she wanted it a lot sooner than I did. It wasn't the path I was on. I was mm. sort of business focused, head down, trying to build this business and I think we just, you know, didn't see eye to eye on, on where we were going on that journey um, together and I very much wanted to sort of build this 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 business and, and financial kind of support so that I could bring an amazing sort of child and, and wife um, you know, into a life which I could support like with complete sort of financial freedom and uh, she was kind of like, no, I want kids, I want marriage, and like now basically and uh, mm -hmm. I was feeling that pressure and then I guess subconsciously that was bubbling, yeah. Mm -hmm bubbling up and i yeah did the stupid thing um mm. and yeah it was very hard to sort of have to go through that on tv yeah mm. do you regret it yeah yeah i regret not having the courage to just have a tough conversation and get emily mm. like you you know we're clearly not on our timelines aren't aligning right now when we, we even spoke about it on the show just like mm. um, like maybe six months pre that like about her wanting being broody and wanting a child and wanting marriage and her having this timeline of on kids by 28 and me being like 35 and like how are we gonna f like find a middle ground here mm. and like clearly we, we weren't going to um and that's a problem really isn't it mm. it's not a problem i kind of thought of until you, i guess you get older and kids become an actual point of sort of conversation mm. like oh, shall we actually yeah you do have to align on these things yeah. otherwise it's, you might as well just yeah, it does your hands yeah. with it and move on. Mm. And I should have probably had that conversation as opposed mm. to, yeah. But a lot of times you have conversations or we think we've had conversations and people's perspective change. So somebody might say, oh, I want kids now. And then actually a couple of years later, they're like, maybe I'm, I'm actually okay or I don't want kids now. And then actually, you know, time flies and it's like, oh, actually I'm ready faster than I thought. So I think things change and it's same in business, you know, that's why I find business partnerships fascinating. When you see people have been in business for like 30, 40, 50 years and you think, how, how, you know, there must've been times where people have not seen eye to eye um, and in the same, same with friendships. Now I'm curious for you, Harvey, when it comes to, you know, what you're doing now and with prime time and, and reality TV, would you do it again to help grow your business? Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. I think the marketing value that you can gain from it is 
it's, it's priceless well it's, mm. it's actually priceable but um <laughs> it's, it's it's in the millions in terms mm. of what we would alternatively have had to have raised to put into marketing to get the same brand awareness and traction in the market mm. and i've been able to kind of go out and do that free of charge in effect um yeah i would i'd definitely do it again mm. yeah as a, so you mentioned that other you know people that you know that have been on other reality tv shows would you leverage any other reality tv show to grow your business and your brand i'd love to do sort of more challenge focused um reality shows you know ss um apprentice those sort of th mm. sorts of things that go and sort of show a bit more substance to mm. one's character um over and above kind of the gossip side of what and dating side that main Charles can be in love island and these other shows mm. I, I, I like the ones that sort of really show substance and okay, this guy's got a bit to him. Um, so I'd love to do, I'd love mm. to do that. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to pivot as, you know, someone with a following similar to what you're doing here. Like I want to talk about business. I want to talk on, you know, at forums and start using my platform to kind of educate within the kind of entrepreneurial mm. world. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a, well, we're in kind of early conversations about a documentary sort of series or a TV show around the, the building of primetime, which I think would be amazing in that, like, there's, it's that leap of faith. It's that kind of shot into the unknown, which puts a lot of people off becoming an entrepreneur mm. or, and, and staying in a stable career whereby, you know, you know what's coming every year and you know, you're working for the man. But mm. it's because you just don't know what's on the other side. And like if that was some education piece around actually what it takes to to, to build a business, what, you know, the trials and tribulations behind it and mm. people could kind of go, okay, you know, it's tough, but it's not, you know, it's not that bad. Like it's doable. Anyone can yeah. do it. You just got to set your mind to it. So yeah. uh, I think hopefully that. That happens. Yeah, so we're definitely more leaning more the documentary series rather than Love Island, and you know, with a tattoo of prime time on your back, so every time you turn around. <laughs> Get in there. Uh, yeah. I d yeah, yeah, definitely more the sort of testing side of reality TV than the. Yeah, no more ex girlfriends on TV. Let's just park park that. Okay. Yeah, I think I've kind of learned <laughs> that relationships on on TV are, are, are tough. Mm. Um, that said, I've I've recently sort of been dating this girl, and she's joined the show, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> she's great there so far <laughs> brilliant yeah another yeah. girl that's come through come through your channels with with reality, reality tv yeah. that's actually gonna be one of the questions i was going to ask you so i interview a lot of entrepreneurs on the show and also i've interviewed a lot of reality tv stars and one of the things i've noticed is a lot of them say they can't mix relationships with reality tv and then the entrepreneurs say can't start a business with a relationship you're doing all three right so you're, you know you're dating this girl you've got the business and the reality tv how how do you find them working together and can they can you do all three yeah so i mean i have been on sort of against i guess having a relationship while trying to build this business because mm. as i was saying with emily what kind of led to our breakup was the stresses i had with business and the fact that i wasn't really kind of i didn't have the full capacity to, to handle a relationship i was my priority was was business and it's not fair on the the other the other partner mm. to kind of um yeah i guess sort of bring them into a relationship where you're, you're not really there um so i kind of vowed to myself after breaking up with emily one i'm never gonna sort of hurt a girl again and two i'm i'm gonna only sort of get back to relationship when i feel i'm meant i have the mental capacity to actually sort of mm. do that in the right way so the last two years i've been so kind of like blocked off to, to any sort of relationship and i think only as of you know two years down the line where business is now getting to the point where I've got an amazing team around me and I can kind of have a moment where I go, I can breathe and like, I, yeah, I've got a bit more mental capacity where I'm like, yeah, now I've got my emotional kind of mm. capacity has been open. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm now, this is a recent thing with this girl. Mm. So I'm now open to her a bit more. Um, I wasn't before. And I think with TV, it's a recipe for disaster. And that's my concern, <laughs> but it's because the TV they want drama, right? They want the highs and the lows, so they'll 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 push you and they'll press you into want like saying you know we're not currently official, or like we're, we're we're enjoying it, we're taking it easy, and we're both quite chilled out people. But they'll want us to go ask her out, tell her you love her, marry her, have kids, <laughs> or break up with her. It's like they want the highs or the lows, yeah, and nothing in between. So yeah, yeah, yeah the pressure's coming. I'm yeah, sure. and and I guess. I'm just being really curious here at this point. So you're dating someone. Was that person, has she been invited to the show because you're dating her? Is that like the next logical thing for them to show on camera? Yeah, because they want to 
follow your life and if you know half your life isn't on the show then they can't really follow it and yeah, if you're dating someone yeah. then you can't sort of not you, you, yeah if you're dating someone off the show who's not on it um you and then you've got to kind of say no to other girls who are asking out on a date on the mm -hmm. show there's no context to why you're saying no because this girl doesn't actually in reality exist do you know what i mean mm. so um yeah they want they want to see that that's and, really uh, fascinating that and yeah and how does that conversation go with you and her and you know oh the producers would love you on the show i mean i couldn't even imagine stepping into that world or how how you'd handle that conversation well i think i think she obviously knew what a part of my life was is the mm. show and she understood what knew what that's about and then i kind of as it got a bit more progressed i was like you know they i in catch-ups yeah i was like i don't want to I'm going to start talking about you as being part of my life. So I just, I'm going to pre-warn you of that. Is that, are you comfortable with that? Because if I do that, it will probably mean that they'll like ask you to come and join. Are you also comfortable with that? Otherwise I'll try and just keep you a like, secret when like, that's beneficial to you. So I just said, you know, is that something you're comfortable with? Like, you know, and she was like, yeah, fine. Like I'll, a scary decision for her as well, because the same way that I'm, the same decision I made. And I think it's that fear factor you know, putting yourself out to public judgment, but yeah, she was, she was chilled with it and yeah, now she's on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see her on the next season. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So what's her name? Just so I look out for, her. obviously I'm hoping Zeno she'll be with you. <laughs> Zeno. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, mm. it's, I find it's always interesting though, when, how relationships develop, when there is like more pressure on entrepreneurship and so on. Is there ever been a time where you've considered, you know, obviously you're in business at the moment with friends. Mm -hmm. How has that been sort of blurring the lines between business partner and friendship? Yeah, I mean, my business partner, Sam, is is my best mate. He's actually recently proposed to his girlfriend and um, I've got to start writing a speech. So <laughs> he's uh, he's incredible. And I don't think I could have done it without having that kind of mm -hmm. right hand man or, you know, that support because there are so many sleepless nights or, you know, fires and and kind of, yeah a, you know big not issues but it's, it's sort of standard practice for building a business but so many mm. situations that arise that you're like oh my god this could be the end or mm. how am i going to cope with this like the pressure on your shoulders is is huge especially now we've got a decent employee base and you know we've got like people's careers like on our shoulders and we mm. you know we want to make sure they you know they have they have an amazing career path with us um so yeah, there's an immense pressure, and I think if you can split that fifty-fifty, great. You know, if it's hundred percent on your shoulders, it's tough. Yeah. Um, and it obviously that it, it's tough to find that right partner because, and I've heard all the horror stories about best friends going into business and then you know not seeing eye to eye on business and falling out and probably mm -hmm. never speaking to each other again. So far, me and Sam have been so harmonious in, in how we operate. Um, and I just hope it stays that way. And I can't <laughs> see why I wouldn't because we just what well, he does well. I don't or I do well he doesn't and we Brilliant. just like have such a mutual respect for each other that it just it's it's been pretty plain sailing mm. I love that and I love the honesty because a lot of people will think oh no they're just saying that you know they're just saying that because they need to show for, you know keep the face clean for when like employees look up and parents are arguing you know but realistically how has it been behind the scenes when it comes to the challenges of business because we all both know entrepreneurship is not always the smoothest journey like what would you say has been the biggest like sleepless night that you've had as an entrepreneur well, it's Friday and payroll's due and we don't have, <laughs> it, no, but it's got to there. So like our first, our second round, actually, we literally covered payroll by 30 minutes. So payroll's out on 5 p.m. Friday and we got our first tranche of investment in at 4.30 p.m. And it was just like, oh, like it's skinny or teeth stuff. Um, what else? It's just like a lot of supply chain like issues, which is just annoyingly like not our fault but it's it, you obviously within business you're reliant on on your supply chain and your partners that you work with and like just had just silly things like you know cans being printed wrong and like i don't know not being cleaned like all sorts of silly things oh, that could be so easily avoided but it mm -hmm. happens and you just got to deal with it um we had an absolute horror last week where uh we got basically scammed uh, our bank account got hacked into and lost 70 grand that was tough oh my gosh um so it's, it is constant, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just like, I absolutely just love it. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just like, come on, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I hit me, I've got this. It. I don't think yeah. I loved it as much when I started. I was like, yeah. this is like, 
the, yeah, the kind of stress, anxiety was like, oh my God, this is like, mm. I'm almost breathless. But then now I'm like, take it in your stride. It's just what happens. And yeah. at the end of the day, if there's a will, there's a way, you will find a way out. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely relate. And I remember when I first started, I've been in business seven years now. And I remember people would say to me, I hate instability, right? So mm. the fact that I left the corporate job of like six figure salary to come and like just pay myself so much less <laughs> was like the most unstable thing ever plus moving across the world to do it so many so many instabilities in that process and i remember people would say to me but chloe you'll love it you'll love it like you will love it and i was like why these people are crazy like all these people and but these now people were entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs yeah, and, yeah mentors exactly, yeah. or like you know people that i i aspire to be mm. like or who inspired me and i just remember being there like you're crazy maybe i'm not made out for it maybe i just need to get a job and then even when i started even tempting hmm, maybe I'll go back to the corporate world. I was like, no way. And now I'm hooked. I'm exactly the same. It's like, you get to one thing, you're like, oh yeah, I got this. Like, and you get, you get the highs and lows. And it is an, it, it's a drug. Yeah. It is a drug. Yeah. And it feels great when it feels great. And it's one of those things I say, people say to me, oh, I need to develop myself. What do you think I should do? I'm like, start a business. If you're in business and you need to learn, don't learn about business. Yeah, okay, that helps. But you need to work on yourself because it's our mindsets and our wobbles that can, you know, how we handle stress, I think can make or break a business. Completely. Yeah. And you have to have such a tolerance. Mm. um and it's uh, yeah it's showing it's 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 not sort of showing to your you know, your team that mm. things are a bit you know me and yeah. sam have to keep a pretty straight face at times and be like it's all good <laughs> 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 and we will figure it out and we do yeah um, but it's part of, of, of the process yeah yeah. yeah yeah oh harvey i've had such a great chat with you i'm like we're probably way over time but i feel oh, like oh, we could God, we so. could keep keep talking yeah. but um it's been great having you on the show now on the show obviously as you know it's all about inspiring stories and we've been today we've been inspired by you we'd like to understand more about who's inspired you on your journey as well so who would you say has inspired you throughout your journey and your career so far um my mother I'd like to shout out my mom <laughs> no, actually she has massively inspired me she's kind of a single mum as of when i was 12 and she kind of brought us up and she's such a hard worker such a hustler she's built her own business um in real estate out in gibraltar um and has it yeah she inspires me every day but equally richard branson is kind of a big aspiration um inspiration for me um i just find it so intriguing how he's built so many businesses under the same brand umbrella mm -hmm. and they're across so many different sort of um sort of industries and the diversification is yeah is incredible and mm -hmm. like he, he, i think he infam infamously says um business opportunities are like buses there's always another one coming and that for me has kind of allowed me to kind of not have a fomo mentality when i'm assessing opportunities and be like no 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 if this doesn't feel right and i can't kind of commercialize it in my head there'll be another one coming mm. and that will feel more right or less right and there'll be another one another one and, uh, you know, and, and mm. so I've, I've yeah I, I think he, he inspires me a lot and I, th I see prime time going a similar direction in that we're creating a lifestyle brand it's not just a beer it's about living your best life it's about finding balance across multiple kind of disciplines and mm. and it might be that you know we go into gyms we're looking at kind of going into festivals and hospitality as well as beer um, and it's just about creating a brand that is about living your best life being in your prime so mm. that yeah what richard branson's doing is is completely inspiring yeah wow mm. and let's just hope prime time the logo or brand never changes its uh, name yeah <laughs> well, I was thinking, i'll get it crossed <laughs> off and then i'll start here again yeah. <laughs> change it up yeah trademark didn't yeah. work next exactly <laughs> <laughs> when are we gonna get prime time non-alcoholic it is in the pipeline mm. we're developing at the moment um and it's not just gonna be your zero zero it's gonna be but better so obviously prime time is beer but better that's what we do mm. it's ipa but better lager but better lager plus which is like world's first caffeine infused lager but better so we're working on zero zero which we're looking to add a few added benefits to working mm. on a few things at the moment um so it'll be zero zero but better yeah um yeah fantastic and yeah and our, our kind of our, our mission is to go across kind of the beer category so into mm. stout into we've now got our ipa into pale ale uh zero zero and then you know we also we're not sort of scared of taking over other alcohol uh, categories as well nice good well we'll have to have you back on the show when you have an non-alcoholic one and i can have one too yeah we'll have, we'll have, a, sure. have yeah. a drink have a drink together <laughs> no it's cool well and in terms of your journey obviously you've been inspired by some great people you've obviously learned a lot in the accounting world but as a book publisher i'm always curious to know like what books people have read to get to where they are so what books inspired you the most 
What books? I've never been a big reader, dyslexia. Mm. Um, but the Lean Startup was one that I read when I kind of took a took that leap of faith mm. um, away from PwC into entrepreneurism. Um, and it just gave me a kind of, I, I guess it broke down that barrier of kind of lack of knowledge and, and the unknown. So mm. it gave me sort of an insight into what, it, you know, what it's going to take to to start a business. And I guess it kind of, um, yeah, it kind of reassured me slightly more that this is achievable. It's mm. not that hard. I now kind of can grasp it. Obviously, I came from a very corporate structured background with PwC whereby they probably you know they'd never encourage you to go out and do it do it for yourself you work you're a small cog in this big machine mm -hmm. so that but kind of mm, allowed me to kind of open my mindset up a bit towards mm. yeah no this is achievable yeah totally random question but i'm super curious to know if your experience has been like mine has being an accountant been useful for you in your business massively really? yeah 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 i mean it's two things it's given me credibility with investors mm. it's not oh this guy's this reality tv idiot like what's he doing it's mm. it's given the backbone towards the fact that i am a businessman first and foremost and i am on the show to help promote my business so it's credibility there and then also it's allowed me to kind of build financial models that have allowed me to raise money and mm. and have that understanding um and therefore get the business off the ground so yeah massively yeah, yeah. I was about to say, but would I do it again or would I go straight into business? I think I'd probably go straight into business and yeah. and figure it out as I go. Mm -hmm. I think experience is is probably four years of more experience and a four years at head start, I probably would have gone for that. But. Mm, I was going to say exact same thing. Mm. I would say the credibility has helped me, but actually because I didn't seek investment or needing funding, financial models for us is very simple when it comes to publishing and, and podcasting and so on. I would say for me, it's been more like the strategic mind and problem solving and being like understanding numbers. I didn't realize my business partner was going to hate me saying this, but because neither none of them are accounting or business background educated, you know, we'd be on a Zoom call mapping out our numbers and I'd be sharing our P&Ls or whatever and doing some spreadsheet calculations. I'm like, how did you do that? How did you do that on Excel? What does that mean? And I was like, oh, things you forget. Yeah, Sam thinks so... I'm a wizard on, on, this, on Excel. He's like, what is that? It's a formula. <laughs> yeah. It's this thing. Basic, <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Uh, sorry, completely off topic there, but I was just super curious. So obviously, Primetime is quite a big brand that you're building. But if you were to ever go into looking into writing your own book or anything along those lines, what sort of book would you write? That's a good question. Um, I think it would be The Leap of Faith. It'd be around trying to break down that unknown for people and being like you know i did it i went from probably to like one extreme to the other from potentially the most kind of mundane structured straight sort of like laced side of financial world into the most exposed reality tv career mm. with entrepreneurism so like <laughs> like polar opposites so i think kind of a book around my journey doing that and why you know others can and it, yes it is scary but it you know it's achievable and mm. it's doable and if it's you know something you have an appetite for then let me help you yeah you know, mm. make that journey smoother yeah i mm. love that and i think that book will be a lot more appealing for you to start on when you actually have your you know documentary and all this sort of more stuff you know you're passionate about business and helping other people and explaining it to them i think is i think it will come about quite quickly when Would you, you start it? getting it I would. I publish it. Would you it. publish it? Oh, you got a <laughs> deal. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Shall we do yeah. it? <laughs> Why go not? On. Let's do it. It's getting on alcoholic beer in front of me and we'll have a talk. Okay. A couple months. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll on, <laughs> so final question for you, Harvey. Obviously, today we've been inspired by you. And the reason is because your good friend, Charlie, shouted you out on our show. So I'm curious from your perspective, who do you know that has an inspiring story that you think we should have on the show next? Well, Charlie's already been on, so... I don't have to shout him back out, but um, did he say me? And his, yeah. oh, that's great. Cheers, Charlie. <laughs> uh, oh, good question. I think my my initial investor is an amazing story. So we took investment in our first round from these guys because we wanted the line partners, we wanted people that could guide us over and sort of support over and above just the financial support. Like we had sort of offers across across the board, but these guys. We're in the they're in the whiskey industry, so they're in the alcohol space, um, and they're doing amazing things. Um, they're about five years in trading, about seventy um, employees now, and and, wow. and massively growing. They've sold the most expensive bottle of whiskey in the world for two point eight million, um, and it's the space is is called Craft Irish Whiskey Company, and and they're basically producing the most luxury sort of sought after collective like collectible uh, whiskey collection, and it's um, yeah, 
you know, we work with them for a reason and they're doing amazing stuff. Mm. So, wow. yeah, they're, they're, sh- they're stories worth sharing, I'd say. Yeah. Perfect. Mm. Well, let's make it happen. I could be kind of Jay. Yeah. You out there? Come on. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> thank you, Harvey. It's been so great talking to you and, um, and getting to know you and yeah, just hear more about your story. And thank you for being so honest and raw and real, which obviously not what people expect when someone is in front of a camera, uh, reality TV all the time. Yeah, absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love talking about business. I love people that find it so interesting. So yeah. thank you for having me on. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed that interview with Harvey. And I hope you're surprised by some of the things that he shared. Um, definitely different to what some of you would have expected from his reality TV background. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you do share in the comments. If you are watching on YouTube, what has been the most inspiring moment that you've taken from this interview today? And if you're listening on any of the audio platforms or um, tuning in on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe and follow the show so you don't miss out on our next inspiring guest. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.